bit more background on, on the debt ceiling. Plenty of Republican lawmakers have begun saying that breaching it would not lead to economic disaster. Congressman Steve King of Iowa calls that kind of talk demagoguery. However, conservative communist Mark Zandi, a former advisor to John McCain, recently warned that the U.S. quote would quickly fall into another severe recession if the debt ceiling is not limited. With that uh, lifted, I should say. Uh, with that intra-party dispute in mind, I just want to bring in Democratic voice Congressman Elijah Cummings of Maryland. Congressman, you know, the, the, the Republicans say, look, President Obama has not negotiated. He's basically said my way or the highway. A lot of people, even Democrats, have been critical of this president's billing, uh, willingness over the years to reach out to, to folks on Capitol Hill. Why not negotiate now? Negotiate over what? See, that's, that's the question. Uh, they at one well, time, they, they, they say went, delay, well, delay well, for a year me, the individual mandate for the Affordable let me Care Act. Let your question. The Affordable Care Act, that was one thing. They, they said that they could not, they tried to defeat it when we uh, got it through the House and the Senate and then had it signed by the President and affirmed by the Supreme Court. So they couldn't get their way that way uh, through the regular democratic process. So then they said, okay, uh, let's shut down the government. Well, they shut down the government. Now they say uh, we're going to threaten the credit worthiness of the United States of America and possibly the world economy be to do something that we're supposed to do. But, but I don't understand. Wait a minute. Well, we're what, supposed what, to keep the government open and what, we're supposed to pay our debts. What harm could be done if the president just brings Speaker Boehner uh, into the White House and, and tries to forge uh, some sort of a path forward, just makes a deal, compromise I, I, requires both sides, and the Republicans are saying, look, we're willing to compromise now. Yeah, well, the, keep in mind, it was six months that we've been trying to get, the Senate has been trying to get the House to come together over a budget in a conference committee. They refuse over and over again. The fact is, is that the president is clear, and I, and I, and I agree with him. You got to let's keep our government open, number one, and let's pay our debts. And then let's sit down and see what we can work out. But, you know, I mean, they, 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 the Republicans seem to act like if the president, uh, you know, it's, it reminds me sort of uh, when somebody has to pay child support. You, and then the Republicans are saying, oh, you got to give me something to pay my child support. No, you're supposed to pay your child support. But and they so, say that they were elected, that these, these representatives in the House were elected uh, to defund Obamacare, and that, that is wildly unpopular, they say. It's certainly in their districts it is. Um, yeah. And if they have the mechanisms to try to force some sort of a compromise, why shouldn't they? Well, you made a very good point. It may be unpopular in their districts, but let me tell you something. Andrew. It's very popular in a lot of other districts, including mine. Where people cannot, let me finish, where people could not, cannot get the health care they, that they need. Where women, I just marched about a week ago with a thousand women with lupus, and they could not get insurance before now because they had pre existing conditions. One of the things that seems to be uh, lacking in all of our conversations is that Congress acted to give something to the American people. And what they did was give them access to insurance that they could not get. And now you have Republicans coming, trying to come through the back door, trying to take away something. What about them? So when, when what about those people? We just had a Republican congressman saying that, well, Congress passed this, but it was done through sort of sleight of hand and parlor tricks, essentially. You can call, look, look no matter what, it passed. If they had such a problem with it, they probably they could have challenged it, I guess, in the Supreme Court on that basis. Well, the fact is, is that it passed, uh, and I know that they were sitting around just praying that uh, uh, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, would say, oh, no, 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 uh, this is not constitutional. But what did he do? He said it is constitutional. You said it a minute ago. Anderson, this is the law. So It's the law. And every two years, let me tell you something, every two years, I come to the Congress, just like my good friend, Mr. Labrador, we put up our hands to swear to uphold the Constitution and the laws of this country. It is the law. So, so we should be trying to make it work. How does this get resolved? How does this not lead to the debt you, ceiling? How does it? Well, what you asked the question a little bit earlier. What we, I guarantee you, I bet everything I've got, except my wife and kids, that if you put this on the floor with a clean, a clean CR, it would pass. You have no doubt of that. Put, no, I have absolutely, unequivocally, no doubt about it. Mr. Labrador makes this argument uh, about the the.
document that uh, we've got 195 people who have signed on saying that to force the bill out. Well, guess what? Th that's not a vote. That, I'm talking about when if this were put on the floor, it would pass tonight. But, but Anderson, let me tell you something. I worry. We, we, our country is better than this. We really are. I did not come to the Congress to throw Mr. Labrador's constituents under the bus, and I'm not throwing mine under the bus. Congressman, and I think that the rate we're going, that's where we're going to end up. Again, I think they should do, should go. If, if you want to err on the side of what is right, this is what you do. You err on the side of opening up government. So you go, we hold the vote. If they, if, 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 if they, if we, if they're not the votes there, then we stay where we are. Uh, uh, with a shutdown government. But if the votes are there, then we open up government so that the citizens of this great United States can have the benefit of the services that they have already paid taxes for. Congressman That's Cummings, what it's all about. I appreciate you being on as well. Thank you very much. Let us know what you Thank think. You. Follow me on Twitter at Anderson Cooper. Coming up next, Chasing the